Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story. Roommate from heck gets turned bright green before he leaves for a beach vacation. He returns to discover he's homeless. The second story. The vegetarian will get chicken instead of tofu, and it was her mistake. The third story. The owners didn't care about their employees, so everyone quit. On to the first story. Enjoy your beach vacation, Shrek. In 2017, I took a new job on the other side of my fairly large city. Rather than commute from where I was living now and spend at least 90 minutes driving each way, I decided to move closer to my new job. I could have got a one-bedroom apartment on my own, but my budget at the time would only barely manage it. I'm a single guy in my 20s and I like to go out and order in. Sure, I could have had my own place, but I would have been eating ramen and staying in most of the time. So, I lease a two-bedroom in March 2017 and started advertising for a roommate. A great guy named Dave got in touch. We seemed to click. And he moved in. I have a pickup truck, so I helped him go get furniture, and he helped me move my SH to the new place. We got along great. We were alike enough that we had common interests, but different enough that we would have great discussions. Things were fine. We would split the cost of stuff like toilet paper and dish soap. Neither of us were total slobs, but we weren't fussy little bees that would complain about a dirty glass left in the sink overnight. In the meantime, my job was going great. Within six months, I got a promotion and a very hefty raise. Dave told me he was leaving as of November 1st, 2017. I probably should have just covered the apartment myself until the end of the lease February 28th, 2018, but I made a mistake. Let's call the mistake Bro, since that's what he called everyone else. Bro was Dave's weed connect, had been to the apartment a few times, and needed a place to stay. He seemed like he had his SH together, was charismatic and well-groomed. So Dave moved out, and Bro moved in at the top of November. Trouble started pretty soon afterward. He was vain AF, always with neatly trimmed blonde hair, nice clothes and $500 sneakers. That's where all his money went. He didn't buy food or anything else. I would buy a loaf of bread and the next day there was one-fourth of a loaf left. I would go to take a dump and there was no paper. I used to leave a big jar of peanut butter in the cupboard. It evaporated. I would give him SH and tell him to buy his own stuff. Yeah bro, no problem. But nothing changed. He didn't even have a cell phone. Well, he did, but he never used it. He couldn't get a plan because of an unpaid account, so he had a pay-as-you-go plan and relied on WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger to keep in contact with people, like his weed customers. How much do you think he contributed to the internet bill? Rent was usually late and never in one chunk, and he was a complete slob. Never did dishes or wiped anything down. I don't think he even knew how to spell mop. I was getting more and more peeved off and finally we had a big argument just before Christmas 2017. I basically told him flat out that if he didn't stop using my stuff and start pulling his own weight, then, and I quote, SH is gonna happen and you won't like it. The final straw. I made a bunch of cookies and stuff to take with me to visit my family for Christmas. I told him specifically not to touch the stuff in the fridge and he devoured about a third of it. F you bro. Now I'm effing angry and I am coming for you. Bro is excited to be going to Costa Rica for a week in February. One of his friend's parents had a condo there, and bro and three friends were planning a trip to stay there for a week. Since their accommodations were free, they could party it up, and I overheard their plans. I spent a lot of time in my room when bro and his friends were over, playing video games. I have a good headset, so they must have assumed I was playing away, rather than listening through the paper-thin walls. One of the things they were planning to do was suitcase some drugs back home. Well, it comes time for the trip, and time to pull the trigger on my revenge. Here we go. Bro and his buddies were leaving on a Saturday morning. I told bro that I was going to be out of town, so he would have to arrange for his own ride to the airport, but that I would pick him up. He gave me his flight number for his return flight. I had a few Cokes in the fridge and a chocolate cake that I had taken a few slices from. In the cupboard was a dose and some Oreos. I told him again not to touch my SH. Bro was out of the house on Friday, so before I left, I took every cleaning product in the place in a bag. Every soap, dish soap, vinegar, cleanser, everything. All of it. Did I mention that bro would use my stuff? This included my shampoo and body wash. I use a product called Irish Spring Body Wash, which is a gel that's a bright emerald green. So before I left, I stirred two containers of green food coloring into the bottle and put it back in the shower. Did I mention that bro had a pale complexion? Then I got into the admin of the router and I filtered the MAC address down to my PS3, phone and desktop, effectively locking him out of the internet. Saturday morning, my phone started blowing up. I guess bro went for a shower before leaving for the airport and got more than he thought. When he used my Irish Spring as usual, I wish I could have seen it. He lost his SH, calling me every name in the book and threatening to kick my A when he returned. But there's more. On Sunday when I got back home, the apartment was a disaster. Clearly he had people over and they had drank all my cokes and eaten my munchies. 
That's when I finally replied to him on WhatsApp. He called me almost immediately and started ranting and screaming into the phone, freaking out that he's effing green and it won't wash out. No beach, no pool. Calling me an effing a-hole. How can I do this to him, etc.? I just told him that I said that if he keeps using my SH, something would happen that he didn't like, and he wouldn't be in this mess if he wasn't an effing thief. Then I told him that he should actually be grateful and thank me. Thank you. Thank you for what, you see? Thank me for not loading the cake with laxatives like I had planned to. On Tuesday, I messaged him. Bro, the cops were here looking for you. What? What for? Don't know, bro. They just wanted to know where you were. What did you tell them? That you were in Costa Rica, but that you were flying back in on Sunday afternoon. There were no cops, but he didn't know that. All he knows is that there was a possibility that they might be waiting for him on arrival, and that if he was discovered smuggling drugs, he would be in big trouble. So there went his suitcasing plans, and there went his plans to pay for his trip. On Friday, I told him that I wouldn't be able to pick him up the airport, but not why. I had given my notice and surrendered the apartment. All week I packed up my stuff, all of it. I actually owned the furniture in bro's room, but I didn't want it, so I went into his room, dumped his SH on the floor, and dragged it down to the dumpster. I slashed the mattress and kicked the dresser and bedside table to matchsticks, couch and chairs too. Then I emptied the place. Every cup, plate, knife, fork, all of it was either trashed or moved. I did leave one small pot, but I drilled a hole in the bottom just to make my point. I took the shower head. I took the shower curtain. I took the shower curtain rings. I emptied the place. I heard later from Dave, who knew one of the guys that went to Costa Rica with bro, that bro had showed up with very little money, and what little he had was soon gone. He was mooching off of the others, and it didn't take long for them to tire of bro. Whatever fury they may have felt by the greening of bro was soon diffused once they caught wind of his true nature. I don't know how he got back from the airport, but on Sunday he called me, freaking out about the apartment. Where's my bed, man? Where's my furniture? What furniture? All that stuff was mine, and I didn't want it anymore. What the F, man? What did I ever do to you? Aside from steal my SH, not pull your weight, and F me over for rent and bills, you mean? Now I have to sleep on the floor? F you, a-hole. No, F you, bro. Just to let you know I did you a favor. Now you have less SH to move. Better get started looking for a new place to live, because the management of the building is changing the locks on Wednesday morning. Then I blocked bro. Never heard from him again, but Dave told me he couch surfed for a few weeks and disappeared. Probably moved out of town. Who knows? Good riddance. The next story is... Be condescending, D-ish vegan trying to order carryout? Enjoy a decidedly non-vegan meal when you get home. I never really believed in the stereotype of the condescending holier-than-thou vegan. I figured it was an invention of omnivores that liked to make fun of vegans and project some kind of judgment attitude on them. And then I met her. She came into this really solid Asian fusion restaurant that does carryout. She was talking to her friend, and the gist of the conversation was that she was appalled that she was even in this restaurant. The food didn't even count as vegan, since they also served meat. In fact, for the 10 minutes that I knew her, she basically had nothing nice to say about anyone or anything. It was pretty spectacular, listening to one person manage to say nothing nice for 10 minutes. She could win gold in the A-hole Olympics. I'd been standing in line patiently waiting to place an order, with one person in front of me. As she walked in, that person finished ordering, at which point she breezed by me like I didn't even exist. I'd like a tofu lo mein. The woman behind the counter looked at me, and I coughed politely. I'm sorry, I was here first. This elicited the biggest, most how dare you waste my time eye roll I've ever seen, and she wordlessly stepped back. I ordered a chicken fried rice, then she ordered her tofu lo mein, and we stepped back to wait for our food. Ten minutes later the first order popped up, at which point this woman, mindlessly chatting with her friend about how much someone they both knew is a total B, swiped the order without thinking, and without a thank you, and stormed for the door, in a desperate hurry to ruin other people's evening somewhere. My first thought was, um, isn't it likely that my order finished before yours? And I almost said it, and then I realized she was storming out with the meals she really really didn't want. The next meal popped up about two minutes later. I grabbed it knowing there was a solid chance it was tofu, thanked the very nice woman behind the counter, and left without stopping to open it, afraid that if I wasted a second's time, that angry shrew might have stormed back in and corrected her oversight. I triumphantly ate a tofu lo mein back at home that night. Well, I ate the lo mein and picked around the tofu. I don't know if that harpy returned demanding her correct meal or if she just got home, realized it was chicken fried rice, and threw it away dejectedly. I just hope she felt some level of the misery she seemed to enjoy forcing on everyone around her. The last story is, SH employers get a nice surprise after I leave. Okay, so I worked for a small family doctor's office. My first job out of school, I always wanted to do right by my patients. All these employers wanted to do is make money. No concern for employees, who dropped like flies, and patients, who were constantly mad. Instead of actually caring about the patient's concerns, they spent more time micromanaging staff, to the point where they even put timers on our computers and a GPS app on our phones that functioned as a punch clock. 
They even had managers monitor security cameras to make sure everyone was slaving away. None of us had workspaces, and doing simple things like taking break or listening to music were not allowed. Clearly, if we had time to be human, we couldn't possibly be working hard enough. The owners would never spend money. They didn't buy paper towels, our bathrooms did not have soap, we didn't have water or even cups. There was no coffee or break room, people ate lunch in their cars alone because there was no space or utensils. We also had to pay for our own training because they would offer to cover it and then make getting reimbursed really hard. But that's just the beginning, they also cut corners when it came to patient safety and privacy. They were too cheap to buy masks for providers for when patients came in with diseases like tuberculosis. When I asked about this they told me I was being a baby. Lastly, they required providers to use personal computers for tasks involving patient data, a major HIPAA violation. Once again, they told me I was wrong when I brought it up. By the way, these are the same personal computers that they put timers on. Now for the fun part. One of the owner's favorite employees was pregnant. The owners wanted to have a party for her, but spend no money. How would they do it? Well, they knew I had a good relationship with pharmaceutical reps. It just so happened that I had one coming on that Monday. The baby shower was scheduled for Friday. Now the pharmaceutical reps usually brought lunch for everyone and taught about the newest drug. They also brought samples and coupons for the patients. So cheap owners had a grand plan, move the baby shower to Monday so that the pharmaceutical rep brings lunch for everyone and they won't have to buy it. They even told me to switch the order from my usual Chick-fil-A to some fancy vegetarian restaurant because they were vegetarian. I ended up quitting one day before. The drug rep called my cell phone and asked about the lunch. He knew it was a baby shower and thought it was weird. I agreed and canceled the lunch, did not tell the owners. I wish I could see their faces when the free food wasn't showing up. A day or two after I left, two other employees quit, and more will soon follow. I also reported them to the Board of Health and HIPAA. Their day will come soon. I'm unemployed right now and taking my time looking for the perfect fit. I thought small family owned was the way I wanted to go, but at this point I may want to be transitioning to a larger company and a specialty. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.